Hey, welcome back. We're going to go over how to do oscillations or reciprocated motion in Logix today. Um, I saw a couple of questions on this. So I wanted to just fill them in. Um, I can't remember exactly who left the question. So if it's you, leave a comment. I'll uh, pin it. Let people know that it's you that asked the question. So I'm going to show you what uh, I'm going to build and then we'll go over it. So let me hop into smooth POV and I'll show you what's going on. We have uh, an update, by the way, from uh, Fruits, which allows my camera to be moved uh, just back a little bit, so you should see a little bit more of my hands. It was just a little thing that's bothering me in my uh, last batch, so here we go. So this is a cube. It's going to move backwards and forwards forever, and it's entirely powered by Logix, and it's done doing the most highly configurable way I can think of. So we're going to build exactly this, and I'll talk about how it works as we go. All right, so I'm going to turn to the right here, and we're going to grab a dev tooltip, and we're going to make the cube, 3D model box. I'm also going to color it red just so we can see it a little bit better in this environment and uh, go to this side of it. Now we need to inspect the cube to get a uh, Logix interface to it. So I've opened up in my inspector here and then I'm going to grab my Logix tooltip here and I'm going to grab a reference to the box and put it next door. And there we go. So I'm going to go over this in a little bit of detail. Um, again, this isn't a straightforward basic Logix tutorial. So if you know um, Logix, then go ahead and follow along. If you're new to Logix, please go follow a uh, basic Logix tutorial. I'll link one in the video description by Business Lawyer. It's a really good one. So you'll see here the slot has a position slot. And I can pull out a display node for that. And you'll see this is the current position. I could also do an input and set that position. But what I actually want to do is I want to get a reference to where it is in the world right now but I want that to be a configurable uh, setting. So the way to do that is we're going to open up the Node browser. We're going to go to input and we're going to go to float three. Now in Neos, when you see a number after a data type, in this case float, it means that the data type contains three of that data type in uh, like a row or a sequence. So in this case, float three means there are three numbers, X, Y, and Z, and we can specify each of them. We want them to match this. And so the easiest way I found to do this, there's probably better ways, but this doesn't take long. So you just grab it and drop it in. There we go. And now I can go ahead and plug this into the position slot here. And uh, it, you'll see it didn't move, but if I start editing this number, you'll see, oh, look, it's uh, it's gone down in the floor a little bit. And if I do that, it'll go up into the sky a bit more. I don't remember what the original value here was, so I will... Oh, looks like we don't have that on the undo history. That's fine. I think it's like 1.5. That'll do. So now we're going to make this oscillate backwards and forwards. And uh, to do that, we're going to need a little bit of maths. Now, don't be scared because we can go through it as we go. And you don't really need to understand the sort of finer points about it. You just need to understand. Oh, oops, I shouldn't have done that one. Actually, you can do that again. Hold on one second. Boop. Um, so what we need to do here is basically say, which way do we want it going backwards and forwards? And the way I want it going backwards and forwards is exactly like this one. And so if we look at the gizmo of our cube, you'll see that the red gizmo is coming out this way. And so we know that's the X one. You can go up to the top here of the inspector and it will say X plus one right uh, minus left. So that's the direction we're going to go. And so uh, how do we go about doing that? And the way that we're going to do that is by modifying the... Um, X, which is negative uh, 3.8 right now, we're going to modify that um, by a bound. So it's going to be sort of plus 2, we'll move it plus 2 in uh, that direction, and then negative 2, we'll move it in that direction. And so we want basically a backwards and forwards motion. How do we get that? Um, we're going to use a little bit of maths for that. So if we go to the input folder, uh, inside there you'll see t. Now t, I've used it before in the past, but I'll explain it again, is basically a measure of the number of sort of seconds or ticks. I'm not entirely sure which. It looks like it might be seconds. It doesn't really matter. It just counts up based on how long the session's been running. And um, this is what we're going to use as the input to our mathematical calculation. We're going to then put that into uh, a node called uh, sin, which stands for sine, uh, which is actually a math. Now, sine is a trigonometric function. Now, please don't get scared by that. Uh, you don't need to know how it works. Um, it's stuff to do with triangles and weird sort of stuff like that. Uh, if you remember back to high school, you probably used it on a calculator like a dozen times to do weird things with triangles. Um, all that you need to know is that it will always return the number from positive one to negative one. And so this is what gives us a reciprocating motion. So you can see it's going... Um, forwards to one and then backwards to one forwards to one and then backwards to one um, and that's what we want next we need to figure out how to apply that to this number and so we're going to do that using um, a addition node now this is another um, sort of um, 
fact about uh, Nias that you might not know is that you can actually just plug most of these uh, triple numbers or even the sort of lower ones like float 2 or even the higher ones like float 4 etc into the plus node and it'll just convert so take this float 3 hit it in and you'll see that's now converted into a float 3 addition and so that means it's expecting a float 3 out of here so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to um, pack xyz and what pack xyz does is it takes um it takes three float numbers and turns them into a float 3 so it packs three floats into float three. So what we're going to do here is plug the output of sign into the x value and then plug the output of that into the plus. These will default to zero because we don't have an input on them. So you can see we've just got this exact same number, but it's in the x property of the float three. As we're adding that to this float three number, we'll then get a result, which is basically the same position, but the x value is constantly changing based on the sign of t. So we can then plug this in, and you'll see that our cube starts moving backwards and forwards. That's all there is to it, but I actually want to show you just a little bit more, which is how to uh, make things faster, first of all. So to make things faster, all you need to do is multiply t by a certain number. You can actually go into input here, and you'll see things like shortcuts like t times 10, which is 10 times as fast as t, or t divided by 10, which is 10 times slow, or t divided by 2, which is uh, 2 times slow, or half speed. Uh, not 2 times slow, like well, half speed. That's a better way of phrasing it. Um, the actual easier way to do this in a more configurable manner is to use another multiplication node. So we times t by our speed. So if we times t by 1, it's 1 speed. If we times it by 10, it's 10 times speed. So I'm going to leave that at 10, and we'll plug that into sign. And we'll see that we've now got a lot faster of running cube. And I can also up this to 100, and you'll see we can barely see it. But I can also slow this down by going to um, fractionalize numbers. So if we go to 0 0.5, that's half speed. You go to 0 0.1, which is 10 times speed. That's barely noticeable. Um, you could do, I don't know, ships or swaying in the, in the ocean for that. Uh, but we're going to leave it at 2 for now, so we can see a nice speed here. And then the next thing I'm going to do as well is um, change up how much it goes backwards and forwards. And to do that, we're going to use multiply again. And we're going to multiply the output of sign by our um, threshold, so how far we want it to go backwards and forwards. Right now it's only doing one backwards and forwards, so negative one, positive one on our um, oscillation. But we can up that to, say, a larger number like five. And then we just replace our input to pack XYZ with the five. And you'll see it's now going quite a lot more distance. You'll also see, however, that it's got a lot faster, and that's because um, it needs to complete the whole oscillation in the time that we've given it. And because there's a lot longer of a distance here, it's having to go faster. If I were to say, hey, you know, this is instead of 5, it's actually 20, you'll see this is very fast, and that's because it's got a lot of distance to cover. It's just going to keep doing this forever. So we might want to slow down the speed here. Let's take it down to 1. That's still a bit too fast. Let's go to 0 0.5. There you go. It's not going to be as slow as that one, but that's fine. Uh, we'll stop there for uh, uh, quickness sake, because we're already at 8 minutes on this video. I'm then going to go ahead and do the last step, which is packing this logics into um, the uh, box that we don't see anymore. So we grab box here, and we go to set packing root, and then it will say box beneath here. It has said as box throughout this tutorial, but that's that box. Now it's this box. You might want to name the box, I don't know, Zoomy box or whatever, and then you can pack it. And we're also going to get rid of some stuff we don't need, like we don't need this display node up here. And then we can just go ahead and pack that. There you go. I'm going to now deselect everything. And you'll see the cube's just going to keep doing that over and over and over and over again. Um, now, this isn't, of course, the only way to make stuff move like this. There are a multitude of ways. There are like hundreds of ways in Logix. I've left some links in the video description for other ways that you can do this. Um, there's a multitude of components. They all have different properties, so I'll uh, leave those for you. Um, oscillation also works with other things, such as scale, um, rotation, all sorts of things. Just, just go for it.
you want some homework, try experimenting with the different types of um, trigonometric functions. So if we go back to the uh, logics, oh, math, um, the three trigonometric functions are sin, cos, and tan, and they're all slightly different, um, but they do also do this kind of oscillating effect. So, so try them out. Let's see what happens. Tan's usually quite interesting. There you go, that's all there really is to it. If you'd like to know more information about this sort of effect, please do let me know. Um, I will see you next time.